<laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. Pop a Flamby's Zap and Calendar. Oh, I a a a a a ha. Are you here? Minecraft pathways, gravel pathways, colored in Minecraft airs. In the Minecraft air, there's a feeling of Christmas. Diamond mining, miners gliding, with the new Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to our video. No, you are not mistaken, this is what we are going to talk about today. 24 ways to integrate this bad boy right here. And I want to be honest, at the moment I have derived like 32 different ways to integrate this. But I'm only going to cover 24 because it's Christmas here in Germany today, 24th of December. and. It has been such a great year, 2018. This video right here is already such a Christmas present to me because so many cool people are participating in here. So keep watching this free blue and brown in here, black pen, red pen, Matt Forlager, Matt Parker. It's absolutely amazing. So keep, keep watching. I just love the stuff they have created and yeah we are going to dive right in with the first method i hope you guys are going to enjoy this video and yeah thank you for all the support you gave to this channel in the year 2018 and i hope you are going to continue to support me in the next year love you guys so this first approach is the one you might actually think about at first using the Riemann sum definition of this integral right here. So meaning we are going to take a look at the graph of this thing. I'm going to put a little sketch right here. So imagine we have the cosine right here on the interval from A to B, for example, let's put it like this, from A to B, lower bound, upper bound of the integral. And what we want to do, we want to evaluate the area under this curve, which is basically equivalent to saying we are going to calculate the integral. This thing has a certain measure, which is the area in this case. Okay, how can we do this? Well, we are going to approximate this right here with infinitely many rectangles, which have the same base down here. So they all have the same base. So for example, we take some a is x0, then we have some x1 here and some x2 here, and we are going to put rectangles into here, okay? And we are going to take this n and let it go to infinity, infinitely many rectangles, and the distance from x0 to x1 or from x1 to x2 is always the same. It's just delta x in this case. We're going to call it delta x and we can define it as follows. This is just, well, the average distance between those two. So b minus a over n, where n is the partition, the partitions of our x-axis in this case. Okay, what else do we need? We have a base now for those rectangles, but we also need a height. What is the height exactly? Well, the, the height of this first rectangle is just the cosine evaluated at the point x1. And here it's the cosine evaluated at the point x2, for example. So our height is always just the cosine of our xi's. But what are our xi's? Well, our xi's basically are just, we're going to start from a right here, and we are going to add i times delta x to it. So if we add 2 times delta x to it, we are going to land at x2. This is what we actually want. So we are going to add i times delta x to it. Now we can work with actual numbers because, you know, we have our upper and lower bounds. So this right here is going to evaluate to pi over 2 times n. This is going to be 0. So we are going to end up with, um, in this case right here, our height is the cosine of nothing but, yeah, i times pi over 2n. And now we are going to sum all those rectangles up and yeah, then we are basically done. So what we are going to do, we are going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sum from i equals to 1 to n in this case of our delta x times the height. So this is just pi over 2 times n times the cosine of i times, well, pi over 2 times n. And when we actually evaluate this, I'm going to do this in a separate video, I swear, this limit right here goes to 1, which is just the sine of pi over 2. But this is for the next one. <laughs> 
。今天呢，老师要教你们去怎么做积分从零到二分之派 cos x。这题呢，其实很简单，为什么呢？因为我们都很聪明，对不对？因为我们知道，当我们微分 sin x 的时候，我们会拿到 cos x， 所以呢，我们就先把 sin x 写下来，然后再把数字们带进去。先放零在这边，然后二分之派在上面，但别忘记了，先把二分之派放进来。我们拿到什么呢？就是 sin， 然后里面有二分之派，然后别忘记了，要减掉 sin， 然后把零放进去，在这边。那老师常常跟你们讲说 ，sin 的二分之派等于什么呢？是一，对不对？先把一写下来，然后再减掉 sin 的0是什么呢？是0啊，我们就放0下来。一减零，这个不是一比零哦，这是一减零。答案呢，还是等于一。那我们就做完了，各位亲爱的观众朋友们，这就是答案。嗯，就这样子。Ho ho ho! And Merry Christmas! Today I want to use differential equations to find the integral from zero to pi over two of cosine. Well, um, or sine. So, so let y be cosine of x. And notice y prime of zero is、uh, zero because it's minus sine of x. So at zero, it's zero. And y prime of pi over two. That's minus sine of pi over two, so uh, um, minus one.、Okay. And what does y satisfy? Well, it satisfies that y double prime plus y equals to zero. So y double prime equals to minus y. Let's integrate that from zero to pi over two of y double prime. I guess dx equals to minus integral from zero to pi over two. Of y dx, and therefore we get y prime of pi over two minus y prime of zero. It's minus integral from zero to pi over two of y dx. But y prime of pi over two it's minus one. Y prime of zero is zero, so we get integral from zero to pi over two of y dx minus one equals to minus that integral. So that integral equals to one. So it not only works for cosine, but really any function that satisfies this differential equation, that is zero at, at where y prime is zero of zero and y prime of pi over two is minus one. So it's another like esoteric way of finding the integral. This one might seem quite obvious because we are going to take for granted that, well, the derivative of the sine is nothing but the cosine. So this is something we are going to take for granted in this video. We can take everything for granted except the antiderivative of the cosine. So why not rewrite this as the integral from zero to pi over two as d dx of sine of x integrated with respect to x. And well, if we integrate Riemann integrate a differentiated function, we are going to end up with the function itself in here. So, integrating f prime of x just leaves us with well f of x. So this right here is going to evaluate to、um, yeah, just the sine of x from zero to pi over two. And you see, the sine of zero is nothing but zero, and the sine of pi over two. Well, this is going to evaluate to one. So if you take a look at the graph, so this right here is one. What was to be expected? <laughs> Here's a nice heuristic method to see pretty much at a glance what the value of this integral is. Ready? Don't blink, otherwise you'll miss it. <laughs> okay. Here's a quarter of a unit circle. The angle theta ranges from zero to pi over two, right? Here's one of those angles, and here's the corresponding d theta. Then, since d theta is supposed to be infinitesimal, the angle here. Is also theta, which means that the orange segment is equal to what? Well, cos theta times d theta, right? Which is the quantity that we're summing. But then those orange segments clearly have a total length equal to the radius of our circle, 
and so the value of our integral is equal to 1, the radius of our circle. Magic! <laughs> Challenge for you, fill in the details I left out to make this argument rigorous in the comments. And fröhliche Weihnachten aus Australien. All right, let's get funky with some polar coordinates. So consider the following integral. Integral of x dx dy, where d is just a quarter circle of radius 1. That's 1 and that's d. Well, on the one hand, ha, x d, okay. Uh, on the one hand, let's evaluate this using polar coordinates. So it's integral from 0 to pi over 2, integral from 0 to 1 of r cosine theta, r d r d theta. And that becomes, so integral, exactly what we want, from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine of theta, d theta, times integral from 0 to 1 of r squared dr, and that becomes, so 1 third, integral from 0 to pi over 2, cosine of theta, d theta. That's only one hand. On the other hand, let's calculate this integral using a double, just double integration. So remember, x squared plus y squared equals to 1. In this case, y equals to square root of 1 minus x squared. So this is y equals to square root of 1 minus x squared. This is x, and x goes from 0 to 1. So that same integral is the integral from 0 to 1, an integral from uh, 0 to square root of 1 minus x squared of x dy dx. And that becomes integral from 0 to 1 of the x comes out, and you're left with integral of 1 over that, so 1 minus x squared dx. And now it's an antiderivative, so 1 minus x squared to the 3 halves, to cancel the 3 halves, multiply by 2 thirds, to cancel the minus 1 over x squared to minus 1 half from 0 to 1. This cancels, and then we get 1 minus 1 squared, which is 0, plus 1 third times square root of 1 minus 0 squared cubed, so it's 1 third, and basically you get 1 third equals to 1 third. Uh, integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine theta, the 1 thirds cancel out, and you eventually get that this is equal to 1. Ta-da! Pretty neat, I think. It illustrates also uh, all of multivariable calculus. <laughs> <laughs> so this next one is the most superior of all ways to integrate this thing right here. So you see, everyone knows this well-known fact that the cosine is nothing but, well, 1. So everyone knows this. So we are just going to integrate the x, which is going to evaluate to x from 0 to pi over 2, and this is just pi over 2. But we are not done yet, because you see, if you are a really smart person, you can make use of the fundamental theorem of engineering. This is just the funniest term ever, <laughs> seriously. When I read this on Facebook, I was bursting out in laughter because fundamental theorem of engineering, this is just so stupid. Never mind. So everyone knows the fact that pi is basically nothing but e, but everyone knows that e is nothing but 2. This is just a well-known fact amongst engineers and some physicists. It's a secret. Keep it privately. Don't tell anyone. This is really powerful right here. So this is just, well, e over 2, which is nothing but 2 over 2, and this is 1. And this is exactly the desired result. What a shit show. Here's another neat way of finding the anti, like the integral of uh, not cosine, but sine, but they're related anyway. So using spherical coordinates. So suppose you have this sphere of, I guess, radius 1. So x, y, z. And let's see, where's my green thing? So the radius is 1. Well, on the one hand, the volume of the ball 
Well, it's 4 thirds pi 1 cubed. So in this case, r is 1, so 4 thirds pi. But notice, it actually equals to 8 times the volume of the ball in the first quadrant. And how can you write that in terms of spherical coordinates? So first of all, our radius rho is between 0 and 1. Second of all, our angle theta is between 0 and pi over 2. And lastly, our vertical angle phi is between 0 and pi over 2. And the Jacobian is just rho squared sine phi. d rho, uh, d theta, d phi. Okay, and what does that become? So, 8... There's no theta in here, so it's pi over 2. And then integral from 0 to 1 of rho squared d rho, and integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine phi d phi, okay, which is exactly what we want. So we get 4 pi, and then this integral is 1 third, times integral from 0 to pi over 2 sine of phi d phi, but what is that equal to? It equals to 4 thirds pi. Bang, bang. This cancels out. And you're left with this integral being equal to 1. And if you're picky, you can use a u substitution. Phi equals to pi over 2 minus u to actually also get that the integral of cosine is 1. So I think it's very neat. So. Uh, What's going on, smart mathematicians? Today I'm going to show you how to integrate this bad boy in a slightly less normy way. Disclaimer, it does require at least level 12 Christmas spirit. And in honor of Papa Flammy's thumbnails, we're going to start off using a fun, silly variable, and then switch to using x because we live in a society with rules and customs. So first things first, we're actually going to be integrating from 0 to pi over 2, cosine x dx. Okay, the first thing that we need is Euler's identity. So we've got e to the ix is equal to cosine x plus i sine x. We can take the real part of both sides, which tells us the real part of e to the ix is cosine x. So if we want to integrate cosine x dx, that means we're integrating the real part of e to the ix. In other words, we can actually just integrate Take the real part of the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of e to the ix dx. Power rule gives us the real part of 1 over i, which is minus i, e to the ix from 0 to pi over 2. Plug in our limits of integration, and we get that this is the real part of minus i of e to the i pi over 2. Uh, plus 1, well actually it's minus 1, minus 1, because it's upper minus lower, e to the i pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so this just gives us a factor of i, so this is equal to the real part of minus i times i minus 1. Minus i times i is 1, so this tells us that the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine x dx is equal to the real part of 1 minus or plus i, which is equal to 1. It's a Christmas miracle. Bye. This next one is not the most obvious approach to this problem, but I'm going to go a little bit into detail. So you see we are going to integrate the cosine from 0 to pi over 2, meaning moreover that our cosine is on this specific interval bijective, meaning if we would introduce a substitution, cosine of x being equal to t, we could actually take the inverse cosine on both sides just because this right here is bijective. So meaning, why not let some x be equal to the inverse cosine of t? If we differentiate that, that means that dx is nothing but, and you can check this for yourself using implicit differentiation, it's really quite easy to show, that this is nothing but negative 1 over square root 1 minus t squared, dt. 
So if you plug our x into here, well, we are just going to end up with the argument itself. Cosine of inverse cosine is the argument itself. We can take the cosine on both sides, it's by check this. So the cosine of 0 is just 1 and the inverse co uh, and the cosine of pi over 2 is going to variate to 0 in this case. So our new up and lower bounds are from 1 to 0 and we are going to have negative t over square root 1 minus t squared integrated with respect to t. Okay, you can distribute negative sign and here, but this doesn't make much sense because if you observe this, you are going to see that this expression right here is nothing but the differential with respect to t of, so d dt, of the square root 1 minus t squared integrated with respect to t. So you can easily observe this. This is just check this out for yourself. And well, just like before, the differential and then integrated is just the function itself. So this is going to vary to 1 minus t squared from, zero, uh, from 1 to 0. Okay, this evaluate at 0 square root of 1, so this is just 1, and this evaluate at 1 is the square root of 0, which is just 0. So 1, what was expected? The integral of cosine from 0 to the half of pi is exactly 1, and here is why. The integral of cosine from 0 to the half of pi is exactly 1. And here is why. If you take a point on the unit circle rotating around with a constant speed of 1 and you look now at the projection of this onto the vertical line, the orange velocity will always align with the height of the blue one. But just from the top of my head, I don't know what this is, but if we stop Right here and call this angle X and look at this right triangle you might see next. We have the same triangle right there, so at the top must be X. And being aware that the hypotenuse is 1, we can see next. The orange velocity is the cosine of X, but integrating a velocity will always be just the distance traveled. And now you can see, if X goes from 0 to the half of pi, the orange point traveled a distance of 1. And that's why the integral of cosine from 0 to the half of pi is exactly 1 And here is why The integral of cosine from 0 to the half of pi is exactly 1 And here is why Now we are going to go for the Taylor series ex expansion of the cosine of x. I haven't made a video on that yet, it is coming starting 2019, when I continue with my series on Taylor series. I'm serious about that. <laughs> Greatest joke in history. God bless the papa. So what exactly is the Taylor series? Well, at first we have the integral from 0 to pi over 2, and then we have the Taylor series expansion, starting from n equals to 0 to infinity in this case, negative 1 to the nth power x to the 2 nth power over 2n factorial integrated with respect to x. Our integrand is strictly positive, so even though it's an alternating series. So we can use Papa Tonelli, Papa Fubini dominated convergence theorem whatsoever to interchange this infinite sum and this integral, meaning we are going to interchange those limits. So we are going to end up with a sum running from zero to infinity, one infinity boy, and we are going to bring those two constants to the outside, also negative one to the nth power over two n factorial times an integral from zero to pi over two of, well, x to the 2n power integrated with respect to x. Integrating polynomials is so easy. So this is 1 over 2n plus 1 times x to the 2n plus 1 power integrated from 0 to pi over 2. So we are going to end up with sum running from n equals to 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the nth power x to the 2n plus 1 power over 2n factorial times 2n plus 1, which is nothing but 2n plus 1 factorial from 0 to pi over 2. And you see, I also haven't made a video on that yet, but this right here is nothing but the Taylor series expansion of our sine of x. So this right here is nothing but the sine of x from 0 to pi over 2. And this right here actually is, well, just what is to be expected. Sine of pi over 2 is just 1, sine of 0 is 0, and we're done. Ho, 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 ho! Merry Christmas! Papa Flammy is 
asked me to do some maths for you. Apparently we're integrating the cosine function, but because I'm a physicist and not a mathematician, I'm going to be approximating the answer. Now what I have here is the cosine function from naught to pi, and we're going to be integrating it from naught to pi over two. The way that we're going to be approx- I can't do this voice anymore, and also this bit. Hang on. There we go. That's, that's, that's a bit- There we go. That's a bit better. The way that I've chosen to approximate the integral is through the Monte Carlo method. So, I have two random number generators here. One for the y-axis and one for the x-axis. And what I'm going to be doing is rolling these in pairs. The Monte Carlo method works by approximating the solution to an integral using the fact that the integral is equal to, in a two-dimensional case, the area bounded by the curve, the function that you're evaluating, and the axis and your integration limits. So in other words, I want to evaluate the magnitude of this area, which we can do by randomly selecting points on this grid. The grid's 20 by 20 and these are two 20-sided dice. What I'm going to do is roll the two dice and then take those two numbers as coordinates and note whether the tech coordinate is bounded by the curve or not bounded by the curve. The value of the integral is then the fraction of successful trials, in other words, trials where the pair of coordinates is bound by the curve, multiplied by the total area of the grid considered. The grid is one unit tall and pi over two units wide, so the total area is pi over two. And I have an Excel spreadsheet here where we can note the result, whether it's gonna be out of bounds, in other words, zero, or bound by the curve, one, and we can work out the integral using an Excel formula. As we go along, the value of the integral is going to tend towards the exact solution. We'll just have to see how many attempts it takes to get there. Okay, first trial. 15 and 14, so that is here, that is not bounded, so it's a zero. I'm gonna put the graph up here in the corner and let's do, I don't know, 15 attempts. Okay, let's time lapse this. <laughs> I had an error in the formula then, <laughs> just had to correct that. Okay, so after 15 samples, we're still not tending towards anything, so I'm gonna do another 15. We actually just had a repeat. 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, that's really interesting. I was not expecting to see a repeat. Okay, so after another 15, we're now oscillating just under one. I'm gonna do another 15 just to be on the safe side. You know, maybe just five more. Really what I should have done before starting was set a convergence criteria, um, but I think I'm gonna call it there because I can't be bothered to roll any more dice. So to answer this question like a physicist, the integral of cos x from zero to pi over two is approximately one, maybe a little bit less than one. More data needed. Now I hope you've all had a very Merry Christmas and that you've all been good mathematicians this year, unlike me. <laughs> Maybe you have heard of it before, but there is also an exponential definition of this cosine of x right here. Using Papa Euler, we can actually rewrite this and solving a little system of equations as the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of e to the ix plus e to the negative ix over 2 integrated with respect to x. If you want, you can bring this one half to the outside and then we can integrate this right here, which is really quite easy. You are just going to track the 1 over i or 1 over negative i respectively down. Okay, so we're going to end up with 1 half times, okay, this first term is going to vary to e to the i x over i and then negative e to the negative i x over i from 0 to pi over 2. You can bring this right here together. I'm going to write it out for you. So this is e to the i x minus e to the negative ix over 2 times i from 0 to pi over 2. 
And this right here is actually just the sine of x. So once again, we are going to end up with the sine of x, just in its exponential form, just like here with the cosine, from 0 to pi over 2. And this really doesn't come as a surprise, but this is just 1. All right, Merry Christmas and ho, 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 pitals rule. Uh, today, I want to use the divergence theorem to calculate the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine of x. So consider the following vector field, f being sine of x, 0, 0, on the box, so it might be a present, right, for Christmas, 0 pi over 2, 0, 1, 0, 1. Again, let me draw this box really quickly. Only have five minutes to do this presentation, so bear with me. So it looks something like that. Not bad, okay. <laughs> For the little time I have. Then, let's calculate the line, uh, let's calculate the surface integral of SDS by the divergence theorem is equal to the triple integral over the box of the divergence of f dx dy dz. Now, what is the divergence x derivative of this? So cosine of x plus 0 plus 0. So you just end up with integral from 0 to 1, integral from 0 to 1 integral from 0 to pi over 2, cosine of x, dx, dy, dz. This doesn't depend on y and z, so it's 1 minus 0 times 1 minus 0 times that integral. On the other hand, let's calculate this surface integral. It looks super complicated, but notice the only thing that matters is this front of the box. And that's because, for example, for x equals to 0, the, uh, the vector field is 0. So you're just integrating 0 over a surface. That's not very important. And for the other ones, well, notice here the normal vector has no, uh, sorry, um, has no x component, so it's just 0 times something something, and so if you do f dotted with ds, you get 0 comma something something, so f dotted with ds is still 0. So the most important thing is just the uh, front of the box, but we can parameterize this easily, so let r of yz be pi over 2, yz, because all that matters is x is pi over 2, and then y and z are between uh, 0 and 1, and then let's calculate ry cross rz, that is x, um, ijk 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. If you do that, you get the vector 1, 0, 0, and therefore the surface integral just becomes integral from 0 to 1. Integral from 0 to 1 of what? Sine of pi over 2, because x is pi over 2, uh, 0, 0, dotted with your vector 1, 0, 0, which becomes 1, 0, 0, dotted with 1, 0, 0, dy, dz which becomes integral from 0 to 1, integral from 0 to 1, of 1 dy dz, which is 1, and therefore the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine is just 1, using the divergence theorem. Quite a while back, I've made a video on a certain integration technique I called dummy variables. So namely, we have introduced a certain substitution that t, for example, is nothing but the upper bound plus the lower bound, or lower bound plus the upper bound, minus our argument x, the variable of integration. After playing around a little bit, we are going to end up with integral from 0 to pi over 2. So just try it out for yourself using the substitution right here. Or take a look into my playlist. You are going to find this under the name dummy variable something integration technique of the cosine of pi over 2 
minus x integrated with respect to x. And the cool thing about this is that this right here is just a shifted cosine wave. Namely, this is nothing but the sine. So we are going to have an integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the sine of x dx. Integrating this is quite easy. We are going to take this for granted. This is nothing but the negative cosine of x from 0 to pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is just 0. Second part of the integration gets rid of the 0 and cosine of 0 is just 1. So we are going to end up with a 1. And the cool thing is you might notice that this integral and this integral are indeed equal over this interval. So if you take a look at the graph it does make perfect sense at, to say at least. <laughs> Merry Christmas fellow mathematicians. I'm going to throw a little bit more fuel on your fire as you integrate cosine of x from 0 to pi over 2 and I'm going to do it using Simpson's rule. Now Simpson's rule allows us to approximate this integral using this formula here which is essentially uh, segmenting our function which is cosine for just this segment here up into multiple subdivisions. So we're going to choose a step size and divide this up. We're going to approximate our function using parabolas or quadratics. Our step size is h and in this case I'm going to choose n to be equal to 6. So I've got 6 subdivisions. So our step size is going to be our total range pi over 2 divided by 6. It's going to be pi over 12. That was with n equals 6. Now let's draw a table which is going from x equals 0 to pi over 2 in our step sizes of pi over 12. Now we're going to evaluate y at each of these points and our y is just cosine of x. Cosine of 0 is 1. We've got a piece of paper with some of the decimals of the other ones worked out here. So if we're doing cosine of pi over 12, it's 0 0.966. Our next one, 2 pi over 12, 0 0.8. 6, 6, 3 pi over 12, 0 0.707, 4 pi over 12, 0 0.5, 5 pi over 12, 0 0.258, and finally cosine of pi over 2 is 0. These represent our values of y, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So let's sub them in here h over 3 will be pi over 36, uh, that'll be times by 1 plus 0, 1 plus 4 times all of our odd values of y, that's 1, 3 and 5, works out to be 1.931, plus 2 times our even values of y, that's uh, 2 and 4, so that's going to be 1.366. Work all that out and you're going to get 0 0.9997. We'll call it 1. And everything is coming up Millhouse. Millhouse. Ho, ho, ho! Since the Christmas tree is green, let's use Green's theorem to find uh, the integral of cosine. So, let f be the following vector field. 0 sine of x. And let's integrate f over the following rectangle so from 0 to pi over 2 and 0 to 1 then what do we have on the one hand um, what does Green's theorem say f dotted with dr equals to the double integral over d of quixotic pi m's dx dy and notice uh, q is this, so qx is just uh, cosine of x, dx dy, and x is between 0 and pi over 2, and y is between 0 and 1, so you're left with integral of cosine of x dx times 1 minus 0. This one, well, you have to do it in four cases, but 
Not really, because notice what this becomes is just the integral of 0 dx and sine of x dy. That line integral, and moreover, notice here and here, dx is, sorry, dy is 0. And here, well, x equals to 0. So if x equals to 0, sine of x equals to 0. So all you need to do is to evaluate it over this path. And simply, what do we have? x of t equals to pi over 2. y of t equals to t. And t is between 0 and 1. So this becomes integral from 0 to 1 of sine of x of t, which is pi over 2. And then dy is y prime of t dt, so 1 dt. Sine of pi over 2, that's 1. So this whole integral equals to 1. And this whole shebang, we get the integral of cosine of x dx becomes 1. Woo! Green! <laughs> How the green stole Christmas. <laughs> Similarly to the dummy variable technique, we are going to take a look at a little phase shift right here. So you see our cosine right here is just the shift of sine wave. So if we take a look at the graph, we have our cosine here and we have our sine here. And our sine is nothing but a cosine wave shifted pi over two units to the right. So we can rewrite this actually as an integral from zero to pi over two of the sine of pi over 2 minus x integrated with respect to x. And if you're not sure how to integrate this, just introduce the substitution, for example, just to be safe. So let, for example, gamma. Um, no, let's use something special. Let d be equal to pi over 2 minus x, meaning that the double d, the big, big double d, is nothing but, well, negative dx. You can multiply by negative 1. It's not equal to 0 if you trust piano axioms and extensions of numbers, <laughs> we can just plug this into here. So we are going to end up with, well, this right here, what are the upper and lower bounds? Well, if we plug in 0, we are going to end up with pi over 2. If we plug in pi over 2, we are going to end up with 0. So negative dd we have in the end. And now we have just sine of, well, the d. So we have the sine of the d. And, well, we can just integrate this. In a normal case, you would get the negative cosine, but this negative and negative is going to cancel out to the positive cosine of d, in this case, the d cosine, from pi over 2 to 0. And, well, cosine of 0 is just 1. And cosine of pi over 2 is, if you take a look at this sweet, sweet graph right here, is nothing but 0. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the expected result of 1. All right, Mathologer, that's fine. Go ahead. Steal the best interpretation of this integral before the rest of us have a time to get there. Whatever. I don't care. In fact, I'm glad you took it. It gives me the chance to bump things up one dimension and integrate along a sphere. In fact, I'm pretty fresh off of a video about the surface area of a sphere right now, and lurking in the subtext of that video is this very integral. You see, if you divide up the top hemisphere into thin little rings, the area of each such ring will be the circumference multiplied by its thickness, right? And to express that circumference, let's consider a line from the ring to the origin, and the angle theta that that line makes with the xy plane. The radius of the ring is r times cosine theta, so its circumference is 2 pi r times cosine theta. Now what about the thickness of that ring? Well, it's going to be the radius times the little change in angle from one ring to the next, d theta. So the area of that hemisphere is the integral of 2 pi r times cosine theta times r times d theta. And you let theta range from 0 up to pi halves. Now if we factor out all of those constant bits, you see that it's 2 pi r squared times the integral that we want. And on the one hand, solving the integral gives you the area of the hemisphere. But we could turn this on its head. If you already know the surface area of a sphere, 4 pi r squared, by some non-calculus means, <coughs> shameless plug for my own video, <coughs> Um, well, you see that the area of the hemisphere is 2 pi r squared, and you can use that to conclude that the integral has to be 1. There you go. So this next one is going to be quite a mess, but with this way you could actually get 
finitely many more ways of integrating this right here. But we are going to go easy today, nice and chill. We're just going to take a look at the double angle formula right here. Because you know we can express the cosine as nothing but, well, 1 minus 2 times sine of x over 2, sine squared of x over 2, dx. This is really easy to show because the cosine of x is nothing but the cosine of 2 times x over 2 and this is how you derive this if you use your double angle formulas. So we can actually break this up into an integral running from 0 to pi over 2 of, well, dx minus, I'm using the linearity of the integral to bring this minus 2 to the outside, minus 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine squared of x over 2 dx. And we are going to call this thing right here i at the moment because we are going to evaluate this right here now. I know it's a standard formula, standard integral, but still we are going to talk about it now. What exactly is our i? Well, we are going to use integration by parts on this. We need something to differentiate, something to integrate, plus minus. So we are going to integrate and differentiate the sign, respectively. Differentiating this leaves us with, well, 1 half times the cosine of x over 2 and integrating this is going to leave us with 2 times, negative 2 times in this case, the cosine of x over 2. And now we can just multiply those together and take the integral of this, multiply together. So this is nothing but uh, negative 2 times the sine of x over 2, cosine of x over 2 from 0 to pi over 2. Minus and minus is going to cancel out, 2 and 1 half is going to cancel out to 1. So this is just positive integral from 0 to pi over 2 of, well, cosine squared of x over 2 integrated with respect to x. Now we can just use the fundamental theorem of trigonometry because this right here is now nothing but the integral of 1 minus sine squared dx. We can break this up using the linearity into two integrals and, well, what we are going to end up with is an integral dx from 0 to pi over 2 and also we have negative integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine squared which is nothing but our i in this case. Equivalently we can say that we can add i on both sides to get 2i is now nothing but this integral of dx from 0 to pi over 2 minus this chunk minus 2 times sine Oh, okay, so if we plug 0 into here, this whole term is going to cancel out. If we plug pi over 2 into here, this is going to be the sine of pi over 4 times the cosine of pi over 4. They actually have the same value of square root of 2 over 2. So this is nothing but negative 2 times square root of 2 over 2 times square root of 2 over 2, which is going to cancel out to a 1 in the end. So this right here is nothing but a 1, actually. You see where this comes from? So this is quite easy to evaluate. Negative 1. And now we can just divide both sides by 2 actually. Oh no, we don't even need this. Because you see we have new, a negative 2 times i up here. So we are going to end up with our integral of the cosine of x dx is now no nothing but an integral from 0 to pi over 2 dx minus okay, this integral from 0 to pi over 2 dx, you see this is going to cancel out really nicely, this is actually quite cool. And then positive 1, because negative and negative 1 is going to cancel out, which is just 1 in the end. And this is our desired result, once again verified using a different technique.
All right, today we're gonna evaluate the integral of cosine using some, some straightforward complex analysis. So, integral from zero to pi over two, cosine of t dt. Now, here's a trick. Well, one equals to i times minus i, so write this as cosine of uh, i times minus i t dt. Now, use the following formula, cosine of iz equals to cosh of z. Oh my gosh. So this becomes integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosh of minus it dt. But cosh, well, it's an even function. So it becomes cosh of it dt. And well, we're not allowed to find the antiderivative of cosine, but we're allowed to find the antiderivative of cosine. So, and that becomes sinh of it over i from 0 to pi over 2. And that becomes 1 over i sinh of i pi over 2. Minus 1 over i is sinh of 0, but that's 0. Now, use the following fact. So sine of i z equals to i sinh of z. So you can literally put the i out. So in particular, sinh, first of all, uh, sinh of z equals to 1 over i sine of i z. So sinh of uh, i pi over 2 equals to 1 over i sine of i times i pi over 2 so minus pi over 2 and that becomes um, so s minus sine of pi over 2 so it's minus 1 over i and so what we're left with is 1 over i times minus 1 over i and that's uh, minus 1 over i squared, and that becomes 1. And therefore, integral of cosine is 1. Ta-da! Uh, of course, a bit cheating, but we know how to integrate uh, cosh and sinh because they're just exponentials. So I think it's so legit. All right, thank you. This is going to wrap it up. This is sadly already the last technique. This video is probably going on forever already. This right here is actually my most favorite way of solving this. We are going to use Laplace transforms. At first, I would like to parameterize this integral using some uh, time constant t, for example, here. If we would just take the limit as t approaches 1, then this thing right here would be the thing we want to evaluate, actually. Now, here's the terrain of thought. We are going to call this thing right here i of t. Okay, and we are going to take Laplace transform of this thing at first. After that, we are going to take the inverse Laplace transform of the Laplace transform of this thing, evaluate it at t being equal to 1. And this is just our original integral itself, the solution to our integral, actually. So Laplace transforms are extremely powerful, and I just love using them. They work on so many integrals. It's shiavase, such a bliss. So at first, let's take the Laplace transform of i of t. Well, by definition, this is nothing but the integral from 0 to infinity of i of t, e to the negative st, integrated with respect to t. But we can plug our i of t in, actually. So this is now nothing but an integral from 0 to infinity of an integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the cosine of t times x, e to the negative st, integrated with respect to x at first, and then with respect to t. Actually, the e to the negative st would be here, but it's independent of x, so we can bring it to the inside. Now you see, on this interval, from 0 to pi over 2, our cosine of t times x is strictly positive all the time, meaning we have a positive integrand, so we can use Papa Fubini, for example, to interchange those limits, those integrals. Meaning we are going to end up with an integral from 0 to pi over 2 of, and I'm going to put this separately, of an integral from 0 to infinity, of cosine of t times x, e to the negative st, integrated with respect to t, 
and then integrate it with respect to x. And the really cool thing is that this right here is nothing but the Laplace transform of the cosine of t times x by definition. So when I just plug this in, we have derived this a long time ago. So this right here is now nothing but an integral from 0 to pi over 2 in this case of s over s squared plus x squared integrated with respect to x. Bring the s to the outside and it's going to be a famous identity I have used extensively on this channel right here. Namely, this is nothing but s times 1 over s. This is going to cancel out to 1 of, well, the inverse tension of s over um, x over s, I'm sorry, yeah, x over s, from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, this is just something we can do. And, well, now we can just continue. We can plug 0 into here, and this is just going to vary to 0, because <laughs> inverse tension of 0 is 0. And if we plug pi over 2 into here, we are going to end up with the inverse tangent of x pi times, um, sorry, we are plugging the x in, pi over 2 times s. I'm terribly sorry for that. So you see, this is what we have now. And this is the Laplace transform of this thing, but like I said, we want to take the inverse Laplace transform of this Laplace transform, so inverse Laplace transform, of the inverse tangent of pi over 2 times s, evaluated at, well, t being equal to 1. And I have made the video before the advent calendar for nothing, because we know what this is going to evaluate to. This is going to evaluate to exactly the sign of pi over 2 times t over t, evaluated at t being equal to 1. If we plug this initial value in for t, we're just going to end up with the sign of pi over 2. And you know what? We know what this is, 1. And I thank you guys so much for watching. This has been absolutely nice. I want to thank everyone who participated in this little special. This, this is so nice of you. I, I just can't put it in words how nice of you this is. Please subscribe to all the people who have participated here. You are going to find the channel links in the description. And well, what should I say? Thank you for this amazing year. So many subscribers gained in this one year. 33,000 subscribers probably. It's it's absolutely crazy. It's such a big number. It's hard to even comprehend. If you ask me, 33,000 people watching you. It's crazy. Never mind. If you did enjoy my content this year, please support the channel also in 2019. And well, up until the next video, have a flammable day, I guess. The last flammable day for this year. Maybe. We don't know. Maybe there's going to be something special at the end of the year. Yeah. And, well, I see you guys. Du sollst spielen. Dort spiel. Ja, prima spiel. Du bist ein Dödel. Spiel. Spiel. Oh, lustig.